반갑습니다. Welcome to Korea. Welcome to Panama. Thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, Thanks please, for having uh, me. Okay, thank you. And please introduce yourself to our audience. Sure. 소개 좀 부탁합니다. Yeah, my name is Yoran Brook. I, uh, I was uh, born and raised in Israel and uh, am now the chairman of the board of the Ironman Institute. When I was 16, I read this amazing book called uh, Atlas Shrugged. And at the time, I was a socialist. I was a, uh, a nationalist, a tribalist. And Ayn Rand changed my life. She really changed my views about the world. She changed my views about my own life and about politics and about the world out there. And really, since the age of 16, I've been dedicated to studying who it is, learning about the philosophy, and now, you know, teaching other people about her ideas and her philosophy. I brought a couple of books from my bookshelves. Yes, actually. yes. The oh. Fountainhead. Yes. This book was translated into Korean, uh, Fountainhead. Another book is uh, Atlas, Atlas Shrug. This is another book of Ayn Rand. This book also uh, translated into Korean. Uh, a small booklet in there. This is not uh, fiction. It's fiction. It's, fiction. it's also fiction, yes. It's, it's a short story. Okay. Yeah. So uh, before we start, you know, we couldn't, you know, uh, uh, jump over this amazing lady. She uh, was Russian American. Yes. And it seems that according to the book, you know, she uh, came to the uh, United States and she looked over the city of Manhattan. And she was attracted by the skyscrapers of Manhattan. Uh, she, she loved the skyscrapers of Manhattan. She loved the view of Manhattan. It symbolizes for her the freedom, the creativity, the productiveness that was capitalism, that was freedom. She was born in 1905 in St. Petersburg, Russia, and she witnessed the Russian Revolution, and she lived under communism. So she knew what communism was and what it did to people, and, and, and uh, she managed to escape in a very small window uh, where she could, and at a very young age of 21 years old, she came to America by herself and uh, started with nothing, nothing, and became within uh, 20 years a, one of the most best-selling authors uh, in American history. Uh, she had two best-selling books that, that you pointed out, The Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged, and she became one of the most well-known and influential intellectuals uh, in America of that period. Uh, she influenced many, many people uh, and, uh, and, of course, changed the lives of, of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who, who today advocate for her ideas or, or follow her philosophy. Uh, so uh, we just talked about you know, Ayn Rand. And maybe we can move into the uh, objectivism. Sure, sure. So objectivism is you know, quite a new concept or philosophy in Korea. So you may uh, explain what it is to the, our audience. Sure. Philosophy is Ayn Rand's philosophy. It's the ideas that are in the Fountainhead and Alice Shrugged. But she also wrote a lot of nonfiction philosophical works where she articulates her philosophical ideas. And, and she begins... She begins with the idea that reality is what it is. It's, it's not affected or it's not determined by our own consciousness. It's not determined by some mystical force. Reality is what it is. And we have the tool as human beings, we have the tool to identify that reality. And that's our reason. So we are rational, we are a rational anime, animal. The reason is our means of, of survival. It's not emotions, it's not revelation, it's reason. And then, of course, only individuals reason. And for her, the individual is the moral entity. So the purpose of morality is to guide the individual towards his own individual happiness. So the moral purpose of your life is your happiness, not the well-being of other people. You're not supposed to sacrifice for other people, but also don't expect other people to sacrifice for you. And the only political system that allows individuals to pursue their happiness is capitalism is the, the politics of freedom, of liberty. So the idea is that the role of the government is one. The role of the government is to protect our individual rights. It's to protect our freedoms, our freedoms of action. It's to protect our right to life, liberty, property, and the pursuit of happiness. Not run the economy, not run education, not run science, not get involved in ideas. So government is there to protect us, police, a military, and a judiciary, 
complete separation of government from economics. She was the philosopher of capitalism, the philosopher of liberty. Yeah. So uh, I'd like to comment about you know two Korean uh, men. One is you know entrepreneur, and the other is you know uh, politician. Yep. And one person is uh, Jung Jung Ju Young. Jung Ju Young. Uh, is you know uh, we Korean all Korean knows Jung Ju Young. Jung Ju Young. Uh, he was you know from very poor you know uh, farmers. His father was very poor, so he brought one cow. Cow is you know very uh, biggest property of sure. you know poor sure. family. Sure. But he sold it and yeah. he made some money yeah. and he moved into the you know Seoul and he started with a uh, uh, seaport work, yeah. you know, loading, uploading heavy physical work. But he started with nothing. But he built and created, you know, one of the best uh, shipbuilding company, Hyundai mm -hmm. Industries and uh, Hyundai Motors. You know, mm -hmm. amazing yeah. man. Yeah. So uh, one example is in Jung Joo Young. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I, I think that's a kind of a typical example of what happens when we're free. It's what happens when you have a free market. Uh, opportunities abound. Mm. Everybody has lots of opportunities, and some some people. Take advantage of those people. Some people have the will, the hard work, and the ability to take advantage of those people and rise up as high as they can get. Some of the richest people in all of human history, uh, in America, Rockefeller and Carnegie, were, were, were people who were born very, very poor. And through their own will and their own effort and their own thinking and their own ability, rose up and became some of the most successful, richest people in the world. That is what capitalism, freedom, free markets about creating those opportunities for everybody who really, you know, applies themselves to be successful uh, in life. It, it, everything is open to you under freedom. It's when you control, it's when you regulate, it's when you subsidize, it's when you give favors to some at the expense of others that you hold people back. I see, I see. I'm so, sorry. Another example and I'd like to mention is, you know, Park jung hee he was a uh, born in you know colonized uh, uh, Korea, Korea yeah. you know, colonized by Japan, yep. and from very poor you know, uh, family, and he uh, became the army general of the uh, once colonized poor country, and then he decided to involve in you know uh, 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 politics, and he became the president of the uh, Korea and. The, Actually, you know, some people say uh, his uh, leadership was dictatorship, but he governed our country for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, from through his, you know, uh, time, we started with, you know, uh, per capita, you know, uh, was eighty dollars. Now, you know, uh, thirty thousand, right? Thirty thousand yeah. dollars. So amazing country he made, uh, and in this, the most one of the most industrialized country, and maybe he had some. Uh, wrongdoings, but generally, you know, he achieved a lot. So, what do you, you know, comment over this kind of man? Well, I mean, I would say he, he brought a lot of economic freedom to China, to uh, Korea, and that's incredibly important. And uh, yes, and the achievements of Korea over the last uh, fifty years are amazing as a consequence of more liberty, more freedom, more free markets. It, it's too bad, in a sense, that he didn't go all the way. Uh, there was still too much control, too much central planning, too much favoring big business over entrepreneurs, too much subsidies and government kind of planning, five-year plans and things like that. But it shows that even a little bit of freedom, even a little bit of capitalism, even a little bit of free markets create enormous amounts of wealth. What the lesson we need to learn is, let's go all the way. Let's, let's increase the amount of freedom. Let's increase the amount of capitalism. Let's increase the liberty that individuals have. And let's get the government out of subsidizing, controlling, you know, favoring certain industries over others. And let the market really blossom. Uh, people, like you mentioned before, who, who become very, very successful, become billionaires, who make a lot of money. The only way to become a billionaire is by making the world around you a better place. It's the only way to become a billionaire is by creating jobs, it's by creating wealth, and it's by creating products that people value and people want and people buy and people make the lives of people better. So what we want to encourage is a world of entrepreneurs who create wealth and who build industries, not the industries some central planner wants, but the industries that the market will reward.
지난 50년간 그, Let's talk about the book. You know, the sure. title of the book is Equal is Unfair. So what do you try <laughs> to say by this title? Well, I'm trying to say that economic equality, uh, or even what people perceive as equality of opportunity from an economic perspective, are bad ideas. They're wrong. They're evil morally, and they're economically suicidal. The only way to achieve e economic equality is to take from some and give to others. It's to constrain the hands of the able. It's to constrain the ability of the uh, people who could produce the most in order to give to those who cannot. And that's wrong. By what right do we take from some and give to others? By what right do we constrain those who want to act? So I believe that this whole striving towards equality leads to nothing but poverty, leads to nothing but destruction, leads to nothing but ultimately starvation. We've seen every regime in the world that has tried to establish equality of outcome of any sort mm. fail and, and destroy the lives of its own people. The only equality the only equality that matters is equality of rights, equality of liberty, equality of freedom. We are all born free. We are all born free to live our lives based on our own judgment, based on our own mind, based on our rational values that we choose. And the government's job is to protect our ability to go and seek out those values. The government's job is to protect us from crooks and criminals and fraudsters and invaders and terrorists, but otherwise leave us alone. And when you leave free people alone, guess what happens? They become unequal. I see. So, is this book translated into Korean, Korean version? Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. I'm looking for a publisher if anybody wants to. <laughs> I would be happy to see it in Korean. The capitalist society in the door, you said, you know, equal is unfair. This is about American. Or well, not really. It's about any country. Any because country. the idea is that, that whenever you leave people free, in whatever country it is, you can see inequality in China today. Here in Korea, we have inequality. Every free country, to the extent that it's free, is going to generate inequality of outcome because some people, like the entrepreneur you mentioned earlier, produce huge amounts. Other people don't. Some of us choose to be teachers or commentators on television, and we're just going to make less money because we create less value. Objectively, we create less value for large numbers of people. To be a billionaire, you have to create large value for large numbers of people. Some people become billionaires. Some people become, you know, just do okay. The point is that you don't penalize the successful because some people are not successful. You don't penalize the productive because some people are unproductive. Inequality is not a problem. It's not an economic problem and it's not a moral problem. Leave it alone. What we should strive towards is to maximize freedom, to maximize liberty, to maximize free markets not to try to control who owns what and how much everybody has. Confederation of Trade Union, in the, the biggest uh, union of Korea, and they are saying that uh, just like this, you know, some uh, people are equal, some people are more equal, <laughs> and say, you know, the Koreans, uh, they say that the workers are uh, not guilty, out of guilty, innocent, and they are, you know, breaking laws and whatever they want to make equal yes. country. That's, you know, their agenda. So, 그래서 민노총의 어떤 agenda, 그리고 이제 the Munjain government, this government, you know, as you mentioned, you know, we have a chance to have more, you know, a freer market. Yeah. But this government seems that, you know, more socialized yes. than, you know, somewhat like, you know. Uh, but, but the more equal we have it, the more equal we achieve, the poorer we become. So equality <laughs> leads to poverty. The moral is the practical. When you violate morality by taking from some and giving to others, you actually create a worse off economy and a worse off society so that labor unions are wrong. If they really cared about their members, if labor unions really cared about the well-being of the people they represented, then they would be advocates for capitalism. Because under capitalism, workers do better than under any other system. Their standard of living goes up, 
the products that they buy go down, the quality of life of theirs improves, their wages as their productivity increases, as cap as capital is invested, their productivity increases and their wages go up. So the best policy for workers is capitalism. I think Marx and the labor unions, they present capitalists, uh, industrialists, CEOs, managers as opposed, in opposition to the workers. But that is not true. The interests are aligned. When capitalists do well, workers do well. When, when businesses do well, workers do well. And if you penalize businesses, if you penalize the capitalists, if you penalize the managers, the workers will do worse. Just look at Venezuela today. When we nationalize, when we socialize, when we collectivize, we also bring about poverty and destruction, destruction of wealth, destruction of productive ability. They, they can't get electricity in Venezuela. They can't get food in Venezuela because they destroyed the capacity to create, to produce to make stuff. So capitalism is good for the workers. Socialism is bad for the workers. Capitalism is good for anybody who's willing to work. We'll be better off. You know, 300 years ago, we were all very equal in the world. Everybody was equally poor. And then there was an industrial revolution. And this is true in, in Korea. After the Korean War, everybody in Korea was equal. Everybody was equally poor. It was a very poor country. And then you adopted some freedom. And some people got rich faster than other people. But everybody got rich in comparison to the poverty that existed before. Everybody is better off because of the freedoms that Korea has adopted. Everybody's better off because of industrialization and because of whatever, whatever aspects of capitalism you have adopted in free markets. Uh. So let's just sum up you know, uh, this uh, interview. So uh, before we finish, uh, would you like to have anything you know, to say to our audience? Yeah, I mean, I would say that everybody should, should read Ayn Rand. They, they should uh, read Atlas Shrugged and Fountainhead. It's in Korean. Uh, you, should, you should try to read some of Ayn Rand's nonfiction essays, uh, some of her philosophical works. Ayn Rand is probably the most inspiring writer that I've ever read. And she inspires you as an individual, to make the most of your life. She's not just about politics. She is about, or economics. She's about how to make your life as an individual the best life that it can be. How to live a successful, prosperous, flourishing life as an individual. And the political system that makes that possible is capitalism, because it leaves you alone. So she is the greatest defender of capitalism, not only because she says it works, but because it's the only moral system. It's the only moral system because it leaves you free to pursue your life, to live for your happiness, to live for your values. So I encourage everybody to, to read her books, to engage with her ideas, uh, and, uh, and, you know, hopefully, if enough people, enough people read her works, uh, we can fight for a freer world and, and a freer career. To summarize the interpretation, uh, we have discussed about objectivism and Ayn Rand and uh, 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 Yaron Brooks you know, book. And we talked about uh, many uh, 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 subjects. So now we finish uh, our conversation. And thank you for your time and sharing My pleasure. your views with you know, our audience. Thank you. Thank and you. Nice stay here in Korea. I appreciate it. Thank you. 네, 지금 마치겠습니다. 네, 마치겠습니다.